All right, so let's go over a couple things. What's up, guys? This is Andrew. We are going to be doing M1 versus my current 2019 MacBook Pro 2.3 gigahertz i9. Just to save you some time, the M1 crushes the Intel. However, when you go through the first runs and the initial indexing, when you first start a project and it indexes and processes all the files and then do your first run and then caches and stores it in derived data, I believe. And then it begins to run, like the Intel can somewhat keep up when you run, but if you add a bunch of new code or some, or some pods and you're just like constantly having to re-index sometimes because I do remove pods and add new pods quite often and it, changes the project drastically where it does have to re-index and reprocess and it gets quite annoying and my project is so big that on the intel i am used to it overheating and shutting off and taking 15 minutes to index and process files that is not an issue anymore it is so much weight off my shoulders. I can't even I can't even explain how much more convenient Xcode is now. But yeah, um, let's jump into the test and yeah, let's see how it goes. So we have 9,227 lines of my code, including all the pods that we're use, I'm using. We have 128,000 lines of code. I'm using a lot of pods because I want to get MVP done faster. So if you add all these up, 28 pods. I know that's ridiculous. Trust me, I know. That's how it is for me right now. Quite a few pods, quite a few lines of code. I deleted all of the derived data, cleaned each, updated Xcode, updated system updates. Uh, so I'm gonna jump in here real quick. I know 128,000 lines of code is insane. 9,000 lines of it being mine, the rest of it being the li other libraries that I'm using. I'm using 28 libraries because I want to get to MVP faster, and I think that shows a more real world use of Xcode and the M1 chip because I think a lot of people do use CocoaPods and other people's libraries. And I'm not gonna lie, at first getting all of the po CocoaPods to run on the simulator was a little annoying with the M1 chip because there was some some ARM64 issues that were just, it was annoying. If you're running into that issue, let me know in the comments and I will tell you how to fix it. I know 128,000 lines of code sounds insane, but that's what I'm working with. Now, as you know, the first thing Xcode tries to do upon launch is indexing. The fan is going bananas. You can't do jack shit on this computer. Like I clicked this file over here 30 seconds ago. Oops. This one, like, look, I can still go between files. Like this is insane. Like this is ridiculous. And boom, done. A couple things I want to mention is that I am completely used to the Intel laptops on initial indexing and building taking forever. Oh my God. Yeah, this is on fire. Woo! <laughs> All right, eight minutes and 50 seconds. It shut off. Um, let's, oh, stop. So we're going to continue. I mean, your computer restarted because of a problem. Mm-hmm. It over motherfucking heated. Ooh, it started without me. I don't know how many seconds, but at least a minute. So we have to add on a minute because I was downstairs. We will call it 10 minutes. It is time to run in a simulator. We're going to hit command, run. Oh shit, start. I'm super irritated right here. My camera battery died again, but it finished at a minute and a half exactly. So now we're just waiting for the Intel Mac. Uh, 
All right. I got to see the Gypsy logo. That's like the initial, that's the first line of code I write. This is just the splash screen. There we go. Seven minutes and 50 seconds or something, but it's acting all, it's all weird. All right, guys, as you can see, the initial indexing, it's over three times faster. When you do your first simulator run, it's over five times faster. I mean, that's just bananas. So um, yeah, let's go ahead and do a second and third run now to see since both machines are now cached and indexed, let's see how the Intel keeps up. Second run. Oh, damn. Okay, come on, come on. Okay, we're at nine seconds or 10 seconds. Intel was okay. And we are at 20, 19, 18 seconds. I got to check in video. We got to do that one more time. Command. Ooh. Okay, that was like six, seven seconds. Ooh, okay, okay, okay. Intel can keep up after the initial indexing and first time run. Okay, so as you can tell, the second and third run, Intel can keep up, but that's with no changes to the project. If I did a bunch of changes, especially if I added new pods or removed pods, it would make a drastic difference. So at the end of the day, the M1 is 1 million percent better. Oh, it, it's, I, I, Ever since I got the M1, I can't even think about touching the old MacBook Pro. It's night and day. It's, if you are an iOS engineer, you need this machine. So yeah, that's it. I hope that helped guys. I hope that gives you kind of a more real world example about using Xcode and CocoaPods and having a lot more lines of code than just the standard benchmark that everybody's downloading. Uh, so yeah, hope that helps. Toodles.